You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Will, what's happening with energy all over the place? Mad gas hit a bottom. Now it's going up. Oil, well, oil, interesting case there. It looks like it could be heading lower for a while. And of course, gold with us now is Michael Moore, more analytics. And Michael, great to have you back. So we got a chart up on the screen. Uh, tell us what it's showing us. Well, good morning, Terry. Thank you very much for having me on. It's an honor. Um, so, yeah, let's jump straight into it. We have natural gas here. Forgetting exactly where we left off last time, but um, we've been bearish from 844, which we've seen $6.47.42 and and of pressure from. But more recently on those weekly charts, uh, the, the trade below 513.60 to 499.30 projected this downward $2.27 minimum, $4.70 plus maximum. Uh, I said uh, the maximum could be seen within another month's time. So we've seen $3, 3.025 of that lower, and those have been put on hold. The, and that was because of the break below here. So we saw this big move down over here. We we're looking for it within three months and we're two months into it. Uh -huh. But more recently, um, on Friday or a couple of days ago, sorry, we had just broken above this formation here, popped up, pulled right back to it here and saw a run up. It was just a moderate projection I was looking for. Um, I was looking for 350, 355 ticks originally, which was decreased to 315. As the line moved down, we got exactly 315, actually. And then I said yesterday that I, uh, I sent out a post-market synopsis to clients after the market closes. And I said that although it's bullish, in bullish just recently on the day, I, it warrants pressure before resuming higher trade. So we're seeing some of that pressure coming in here today. Uh, I do think, I mean, this is a fairly long-term formation we've broken out of here. So if we do roll over and take that formation out, again, on the downside, that's going to warrant a pressure probably for another 350 ticks down below it. If we do came, come and take out this low here, this apex low, that would warrant that this is probably in the last stretch of this move down, and then I'd be wary of exhaustion levels down below which I do not have drawn yet, as they're not really drawable at this time. Do you have any questions on the natural gas before I move to crude? Or um, So you think it's going to take a breather, and then it's heading higher, according to that line there, huh? Well, right now, it's very short-term overnight. I just said that we should see some pressure, which mm. we saw. Uh, on one time frame higher, we're bullish because we broke above that other formation here, this, this formation, okay? But in general, overall, with the bias is bearish, that bearishness is, that bias is on hold right now since we broke above this line. If we either break back down below this line, which comes around two thir in around 235 and decreases a little bit, or we leave a maintained gap lower tomorrow, for example, that would leave a minor bearish reversal above and warrant of pressure for days. So... Right now, short term, we're bullish, but just overnight, we're wanting a pressure which we're seeing down into this gap. And we'll have to see where it leads us from here. Okay. All right. So, what about. Did that sound ambiguous or did that sound clear? Uh, well, I think it's clear. Uh, it looks like it's reversed that bearish trend, but, uh, and it's made a, uh, a higher high, right? Yeah. So, just to uh, uh, make it clear for your for the audience so it doesn't sound like I'm talking out of two sides of my mouth. I'm talking about three different time frames of biases. This is a weekly chart where each one of these bars stands for, oh, shows a week's price movement. When we broke below this major formation, that's where I had the major projections to the downside. So on a high time frame basis, I'm still overall bearish. 
The reason why that's currently on hold is because if I drop down a time frame to a couple time frames to a 60 minute chart, we broke above this formation right here, which projected this higher. So we've seen that that bullishness come in. And then just on a very short term basis overnight, I just said this looks like we're probably going to see some pressure into, into today before resuming higher trade, if we're going to resume higher trade. Okay. All right. So what's our next chart? Okay. So crude oil. I'm going to, we're going to look at a daily chart right here. I'm going to kind of squeeze this up for you a little bit. Picture is here. We're in a long-term bull trend and we've come back off and we've had this kind of uh, bearish consolidation. But I would note that the, the lows are shallowing and the highs are shallowing here. So which says to me that this is corrective in nature and probably will resume higher trade in general. And that would be, a, if this builds more of a base here, that would be a real platform for this to take off from. Uh -huh. Now, dropping down a time frame, if we leave this maintained gap higher today, by the way, that'll leave a moderate bullish reversal below. What does that mean? It would, means it would probably rally for days. Dropping down a time frame to a 60-minute uh, time frame, this is a classic bearish structure right here, which ended by holding an exhaustion they had down in here. And now we started either a bullish correction against this move down, or this is a new bull trend. It's hard to set. So we held exhaustion here, rolled over, rolled over a few times. Now we're testing higher levels. You take this formation out, that's going to warrant a higher trade. And the, the last two exhaustion levels are this one right here and this one right here. So this exhaustion level is between 77.99 and 78.46. And the last one is at 79.29. If it gets through 79.29, it warrants it's going to run up to 80.78. But one thing I would caution of is we do have a sizable uh, bullish formation coming in here uh, that's been formed over uh, quite a bit of time. And if we break above that, the projections above there would be at least $5. Okay. If this is to roll over on the downside and close that gap higher today and start coming off down in here, then there are some bearish formations down in here. If we break below those, and those would press this lower for at least a couple dollars. And uh, maybe as much as uh, six or seven dollars. Okay, right. interesting. So it's kind of forming a wedge there, a pennant, right? Exactly. So you just consolid so, consolidating. So it depends whether it uh, breaks higher above the uh, above the wedge, the pendant, or lower, right? Yeah, and you know when it's consolidating, oftentimes it's confusing, right? You, you know, you had these lower highs here. We we took out these highs here and then we fell back down through them. And then we took out these lows, but then we came back up through them. So it's a consolidating wedge. This is the that main line right there is what I'd really be watching on the upside for this to take off from. And the bottom of this is really what I'd be looking for for a more major move to the downside. Right now this is just a smaller time frame bullish correction or trend against this move down from eighty seventy eight. All right, that's interesting, and uh, I guess it was, so. When do you think it's uh, we're going to see some clarity on the direction? Is it a couple of weeks or a couple of months? No, I think uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, one of the things that you should be aware of is the um, what the cracks are doing. The heat crack broke to the upside, and that warns that the that the heat is strong relative to the crude. So that's really kind of leading the picture to the upside, um, which makes sense because heating oil is a product of the crude oil. So the, the heating oil and the unleaded gas are really leading the move upside to the upside. And the heating oil has a different sort of picture than the, the unleaded gasoline is a similar picture to the WTI. Uh -huh. The heating oil does not, it's pretty, pretty different over the past couple of months. Well, one thing I just note here, which is pretty easy for your viewers to see, is this big uh, consolidation pattern here. And when this takes takes this out on the out upside, if we take it out, um, that's going to warrant of a sizable move to the upside, uh, probably to the tune of at least forty cents uh, for a heating oil, really? and, and that would take a ways to get up there anyway. But okay, all right, I'll buy it. Do you want to look more like? The Brent or the gas at all, or uh, yeah, let's look at the Brent. Just curious to see what the divergence looks like there. Okay, so the Brent also we had uh, had a classic bearish 
movement down here and now we've been in a bullish direction or trend against it but we did just break above a bullish formation right here which projects it higher pulled back a little bit if we take out this upper formation here that's also going to project it a good deal higher uh probably at least at least five dollars to the upside could could see quite a good deal more and this would have to roll over and take this formation out to the downside to start bringing in pressure break below this would bring in further pressure and if we broke below both of these, then that would suggest that this would be in a lower time frame, a new lower time frame bearish structure, which could last a couple weeks to the downside. Okay. We further took out this lower formation here, that would even add more pressure to the picture. All right. Interesting. Would you like to take a look at the S&Ps? Absolutely. Let's okay. take the market there. So the S and P's have uh, been, as you may recall, I forget exactly where we met last time. But I was looking for this to hold exhaustion down here and start a new bull structure. We've seen a classic new bull structure up into here until we had, held extensive, ex, extended um, exhaustion up here, and then we've rolled over into a bearish correction or trend against this. So the question is, is it a correction or a trend? It's hard to say right now. We did hold a key exhaustion level right here yesterday that I had pointed out to my clients. Bounced pretty nicely into here. It took this formation back out on the upside. So right now, I'm bullish this unless we fell back down below here decently. We came within just a couple handles of hitting the decent penetration below, but did not trigger it. So I'm still bullish here. If this starts to get underway to the upside, uh, this could start a whole new bull structure upward. Okay. Otherwise, we're still in this bear structure. And let me just come out a time frame for, for the viewers here. This is a daily chart. So we were in this long-term bull trend. We broke below that trend. We This is a sort of classic bearish structure. And if, if you may remember, we held an exhaustion level I had down here at 3502. I was looking for a minimum projection up here in the uh, 37... 37 and a half area. We hit that. Then I had another uh, area I was looking for up here in the uh, 41s up in here, which we hit, and then we've rolled over. So this is a classic bullish correction against this move down. The question is, is this going to roll over into a whole new bear structure, or is this in the midst of a bull structure to the upside? And to be honest with you, it's kind of hard to tell. I would say, I would note that this structure is looks to me corrective in nature. What does that mean? That means that it suggests to me that this is more likely to return to the upside than it is to trend downward. But and we'll have to see. It. Which is a totally contrarian call, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right. I like it. I uh, hadn't quite looked at the chart that way, but uh, what's the old saying that uh, stocks climb on a wall of worry? <laughs> well, I mean, you could see the the, the the trending nature of, I'll just draw a few things for you. The trending nature of this going upward is you, you're making highs and, and coming back off by not really taking them out. Making highs, but not really taking them back out. Making highs and lows that are increasing, increasing, increasing until they finally do get taken out. But here you can see that you know, we, we make this low, but we come back up through it way up into here. And then we make, you know, this low and we really violate it here. Or we make this low and we, you know, really violate that low again here and then make this low and really violate that one to the upside. So that suggests to me that it's probably going to resume higher trade um, or, or the likelihood of, he of seeing a, a bullish structure is probably more likely than seeing another one of these bearish structures. Yeah, so. right. But opinions in here can change day by day and week by week. <laughs> yeah, which, that's it, a... which, which doesn't mean that I don't mean to set, make that sound like a, a wish washy statement. It's just that if you are going to be on your game with the market, um, looking at things on a daily or weekly basis, I think is a more astute way to manage your risk than simply walking away from the market and sure. uh, not understanding what's going on. Okay. If I'm, I'm just making an example, for instance, some people think, you know, if you were looking at the market from right here to right here, it took 
six months to make this move upward, right? And it took uh, two weeks to erase that entire six months movement right in here. Yeah, it's the, uh, the escalator up and the elevator down effect, right? Don't just survive. The Financial Survival Network. Fury Gold Mines is a Canada focused exploration and development company committed to aggressively growing its scalable, high grade gold assets with major drill campaigns planned across its 3.5 million ounce portfolio. Fury is led by a management team of proven explorers and developers with a track record of success in advancing and financing project development. Fury Gold Mines is well positioned to create value for investors with low risk development growth and the potential for a new major discovery. Fury Gold Mines trades on the TSX and NYSE American under the ticker F-U-R-Y. To learn more, go to furygoldmines.com. That's furygoldmines.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Exactly. Well, markets usually erase their gains that has been made on the upside in one third the amount of time that it took to make the gains in general. Yeah. So when I say paying attention to what the markets are doing on a daily or weekly basis, I think that's more of an astute way to understand where your risk is or on your positions. For sure. Just closing your eyes and hoping for the best is not usually a good- Tossing uh, darts. <laughs> trading tech, yeah. And for, for that matter, if I was just to make another point uh, to the viewers, I know a lot of you viewers are savvy traders in and of themselves, in and of yourselves, but you can see here the movement that it took here to here was about a year and a quarter to make all this all this movement up here, and that was erased in a matter of three weeks. Wow, yeah, that's that's quite a drop, and uh, that's what scares people out, shakes them out, and yet if you had just stayed the course. Yeah. So if you weren't a trader, you'd be right. way better off, right? Well, yes. But the thing is, you don't know when this is going to be more of a secular bear market, which is going to last for a longer period of time. I mean, it's easy to say here, well, we made that up within a year. But, yeah. you know, like back in 2000, um, climb up in time frames here, I'd called a bear market here in the two, in 2000s. 2007 that rolled over rolled over into 2008 and 2009 but if you just held on from here in two, at the end of 2007 it would have taken you back to 2013 just to get back to flat you get even yeah now somebody might say well that's not a big deal you know in, investors or you know your corner market investment guy is going to say well put all your money in and hold on for 15 years and on average you you know you will have made this much historically in the market. <laughs> well, that's nice if you started investing down here, but if you started investing here and you got whacked all the way down to here, it's going to take you a lot more time just to get the flat. And if you're 65 years old and you're investing right here, that's a major difference because by the time you're getting over here, now you're 72, whatever, it can make a bigger difference. So I can see that, yeah. For sure. People have to be careful with some of the advice that's out there. It's always easy to go back and Monday morning quarterback the fact that if you just held this on the way down, it would have gone back up. But there are times when this here does not recover itself in six months, but turns into this, which turns in which turns into seven years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. And for the same point, you know, over a year when we were rolled over. This rolled over in two in two thousand and didn't even get back up there until two thousand eight, and then rolled back over again. Right? Imagine if you started investing here, held it all the way down to here, got all the way back up the flat, waited for it to get all the way back down to here, and then you're finally over here, you're flat, and that's uh, thirteen years later. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of that thing. In the long run, we're all dead. Right? Yeah. I just I think the the argument for paying closer attention to what you're doing instead of just giving all your money to somebody that's, quote, uh, got your best interests in mind at, the, at your corner bank outlet, it's probably not the best idea. Right. I think if you read read five or six books on investing, you'd probably be way ahead of the game. <laughs> I can imagine. All right. So, anyway, okay. so you want to take a look at gold? Yeah, let's let's take a look at gold. We love gold. 
So gold, just on a macro basis, we had built a long base in here, 2013 through 2018, broke out of that base into a, a bull market. Obviously, once you break out, you've already been in part of the bull market. You just don't know if it's a bull market because it's in the base. We yeah. ran up here, held major exhaustion above, which I said would start a macro bearish correction. We've seen that, really moved out into here. And then on a lower time frame basis, took out this trend. We're going to look at another chart to see that on a, clo on a close. Well, you can just look at it on this. I got in bullish right down in here when we left a minor bullish reversal below. Added on to the bullishness on the break back above this line. And then we broke above another formation. Let me just pull that up just to some history here. Uh, the trade above 1966 has brought in 155.9, a decent of the... Oh, I'm sorry. The date, that's the more recent one. The trade above 1641 has brought in 334 of strength. That's the strength that we were looking for up in here. Then All I right. put that on hold because we had broken below a lower time frame formation on the... Let me just put this up. We have broken below a formation right here on this line right here that had brought in bearishness and then multiple other formations. So I think what this is, I think this is probably a macro pullback in this run up. Going back a second. These are the daily charts. From this low here, we had one decent pullback here, ran up, had another more sizable pullback. But I think that this will probably make another run for these highs again. On a on the higher time frame again, I think that this likely has one more run to take out these highs. And if so, it would have a sizable projection to the upside. The same token, this could be the last stretch higher from this whole formation um, bullish structure from down here. And if we were to break up above there and then sail back down through, then you, you could see an even more sizable bearish correction than this from up in these areas. Okay. Well, gold always, uh, always surprises to the upside and the downside, right? Yeah. Today is important, though. Today's uh, movement is important. Let me just show you why. Okay. And I should mention we're in the last day of February 28th. Yep. 23. Yep. We came down and we held exhaustion right here almost exactly with this red line at 18.10. We held it with an 18.10.80 low and have started to bounce. Um, and that was a key exhaustion on the continuation charts too, where we've held this general area right in here. So if this is going to run, this would be a good place to do it from. Um, again, when you're a better way to trade gold is instead of just buying it and then buying more down here, buying more down here and, and averaging against yourself, you can pick certain spots to buy against and pay for your trade. So for example, this green line would have been a line to take a shot at. You could have bought here, paid for the trade, and then when it went against you, got now, made some money on it, and then you try again at another low. Mm -hmm. you know, it came down to this line, bounced a little bit, paid for the trade, and then got out again. Now we've held this line and it's rallying. So that's just a better way to take shots on the way down instead of just holding your, your macro position against yourself and taking more and more and more risk and more of a hit against your savings or your, or your investment account. Right. All right. We got any other interesting uh, charts here that will hopefully give us a little uh, insight into what's happening? Do you have any interest in looking any interest in looking at the Bitcoin futures or no? Yeah, absolutely. We're always up for Bitcoin and then we'll call it a show. Okay. So the Bitcoin, I'm going to back up the viewers here a second. Let me just open it up. Just as a little review here, the rollover on November 10th of 2021 put this into a bearish trend. Right. I warned the sell-off would exceed 13,000 a coin from the high of 69,355. We've seen 54,430 of that. Then we had a more significant, you can read about other words on the way down, but we had a more significant projection here. The trade below 34,830 put this below a significant bearish formation that projected this downward 13,000 minimum, 35,000 plus maximum. We attained 19,905 of that. Um, somebody might say, well, if it's trading 34,830, how could it be projected downward 35,000? Wouldn't that make it negative? Yes, it would. Is that a possibility? I don't know. I don't know about the intricacies of it that much, but a lot of people didn't think the crude oil could ever go negative and it went negative $40 a barrel. So I look at this from a technician standpoint. But we did see 19905 before all of that bearishness was put on hold. 
Then we got bullish from the break above 16275. We saw about 9,000 of strength from there and a couple other formations. Those are on hold. And now on a lower time frame, I caution we were in a the last stretch of the move up from the lows. I think the latter of the two, I wonder if this holds, it could start a bearish correction. It should exceed 3,070 from the high, which would make the minimum target 22,275. And we've seen 2,380 of that 3,070 so far. So just let me just take a look at the chart here and show you what I'm talking about. So we are bullish from multiple different levels down in here. Ran up, we held an exhaustion level right here, which I said could start us in a bearish correction. We came off, rallied right here, failed to take out the high, and have been rolling over. So that minimum projection is down right above here. We have not hit that yet. That would have to hit that to say that this is, you know, officially had a healthy correction. And at that point, obviously, you can keep coming off. Or if one of these exhaustion levels holds, uh, especially this one or this one, those could be platforms from which you could start a whole new bull structure. Mm -hmm. And this bull structure right here happened to have gone from, uh, just on the time-wise, from November 9th, 2022, to February 16th, just giving you a timeline. Right. One other thing is we just have a minor ferro formation right here. If we break above this decently, that's going to warrant a run for these highs. And let me just show you one last thing. Are we over time here at 1232? Oh, by all means, please. Um, just want to show you on a daily chart. I'm going to condense this a bit. All these bars stand for, stand for days. We clearly took out any semblance of bearish trend in the market back here a little while ago, and we've drifted sideways. The fact that we've taken out these lows in here, this general area right there was, was key. That showed some strength. Um, now we've come back up and basically held these areas right here. If we really start making headway up through these areas, that's an additional sign of strength. And if we got above these areas, that would definitely warrant additional strength because we've taken out this main apex here. So either we're going to see uh, this may roll over from here and build more of a consolidation before running higher, unless we take those two levels out, then it could be more of a straightaway run up. And then the last scenario, obviously, is it, it could roll over and go and gain more of that macro downside projection that I had. Uh, which would obviously not not be the ideal picture for people that are long the coins, and the volatility would probably dry up a lot too. All right, all right. Well, thank you for that. That's really fascinating. The chart, the way you presented it, even more sure. compelling than uh, what I knew to be the case. Hey, uh, Michael, people want to find out more about you. Subscribe to your site. Uh, where do you go? Uh, yeah. Let me uh, pull up. They would go to. Uh, moreanalytics.com and that'd be m-o-o-r dash analytics.com all right and we have a link to that in the show notes on financialsurvivalnetwork.com make sure you sign up for your free newsletter got a question for michael myself kl at Kerry lutz that's the email address michael appreciate the insights uh, we're going to be following you closely thank you so much and we'll talk to you again soon thank you very much i appreciate it Kerry. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.